All right, hey guys, uh, Corey here, uh, Get Hype. It's my favorite sorting algorithm for part three of our kind of discussion on uh, kind of the top sorting algorithms out there, the most efficient ones. And today we're talking about merge sort, uh, my favorite. Um, <clears throat> why? I don't know. Probably because I, uh, I always feel lame if the number one guy in anything is my favorite. I guess I have to be like a hipster, but uh, I really like merge sort. Um, I think it's really interesting how it works. And uh, it's actually not too bad to code. Um, and uh, a plus side is it's one of the most um, stable in the sense that its average runtime is its average runtime for a reason. Because it is almost, it, I think it's always like around that time, like always, um, at the same time every time. Uh, the way, like if I'm going through the code and how it works in my head, I can't see anything that would make it not work any differently. Like any, uh, you'll see when we go through it what will make it so like, it doesn't really matter what the numbers are or what order they're in. It's stable. It'll, it'll still run in about the same amount of time. Um, so let's get started. So what it does is it merge sort. It gets its name from it merges arrays. Okay, so it, it, it breaks it up, divide and conquer strategy into little arrays, sorts them, and then merges them together to sort one big array. And it kind of does this in the sense that, uh, say, for example, if I had two arrays sorted like this, one, two, three... And then I had, um, say, uh, four, let's get it better, let's get it better, so let's get five in here. Five, and then I go uh, three, four, six, like this. Okay, say I have these two arrays, and I want to sort them. I want to make an, a, a sort, I want to combine them into one sorted array. Well, I'd look at the first guy in both, and I'd see that one is less, so I'm going to put one here. Then I'm going to move the index that's tracking where I'm at in this array to here. Then I'm going to look and be like, hmm, two is less. Okay. Then I'm going to look here. And I'm going to say three is less. Okay. I'm going to move that back. I'm going to look. I'm going to say four is less. And then from here, I think you get the picture. I'd continue on to six and compare those two. Um, so merge sort, well, first off, to get those arrays, well, how does it get those sorted arrays? Uh, because then, like, you may be thinking, don't, don't I have to implement another sorting algorithm to get those many arrays sorted? Well, there's a trick. If I have an, an array of one element, say I just have an array of the number one, right? Wait a minute, I can just select, delete, can I? Yeah, all right, <laughs> I didn't need to waste the time. But if I had an array of one element, just say one, then it's sorted, right? One is both the lowest and the highest element in the list. He's sorted. So I'm going to break this guy up into arrays of one and then merge them in. So say what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the middle ground, okay, maybe about here, um, and then I'll split this guy up, okay, so I have five, seven, two, and I'm going to split up about here, and then I have five and seven, and now two is sorted. So I don't need to worry about two anymore. So I will split these guys up, and I'll have two arrays. I'll have five and seven. Well, I can easily do the type of comparison we did before and merge them into an array. That's just five and seven. Then to compare it with this guy, I'm going to merge these two arrays together, and I compare them doing the kind of method I did before, and I see two would come first. Then I pop it back up. And the whole branch would occur on this side as well. And whatever two arrays come back from these sides, I will then merge into my final array. So let's get that done in code. Don't save. All right, so um, I've already pre-coded just a little bit, uh, just a function print list that just prints out the list that we're going to be working with. Um, let me put in my keyboard. I only got one USB port that works anymore. <laughs> um, I've just set up some arrays for us that we're going to be sorting. Um, uh, and... I've already put up the implicit declaration, so we kind of have a plan of what we're going to be working with. So I'm going to have the sort command, but when it's time, and it's going to sort them into their individual arrays, but when I merge them, I'm going to have the merge command, okay? And mid's important because when I've split the guy into two little arrays, um, I haven't really made them separate objects. They're still going to be one array, I just have designated which ones are which array, and I kind of look at them from different points. And that'll make sense in the code. It's kind of hard to visualize without seeing it. Uh, but let's get down into it. Let's go merge uh, int nums. We'll do merge in a second. I'm just going to copy the declaration, honestly. 
All right, we're gonna leave that blank for now. We're gonna work on sort. Okay, and he's just gonna he all he needs is the arrays and he needs the uh, the low guy because we're gonna use some recursion. If we want to keep cycling through the array and divvying it up and divvying it up and divvying it up, we need recursion. And so now, as you see, the high level guys that we're about to get into shell sort didn't have it so much. Uh, insertion definitely didn't have it. Um, but as we get into merge and, sh and quick sort, we're going to have to use recursion. And recursion is a little bit, it's hard to see what's going on. Uh, but uh, if we really think about it, well, you know, uh, it will start to click. So first we're going to check, is low less than high? Because if low is less than high, it means we have more than one element in the array. And that's good. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to return. We don't really need this else in return here because it'll break out anyway. It's just nice for me to look at it. I like to see it to look at it, realize, oh, if this isn't true, I'm just going to end the function, right? Um, so if low is less than i, it means we have more than one element in the array, which is perfect. It means we still have to continue sorting. So I'll do that. I will say sort. I'll call myself again. We want to split it up again, okay? So I want to split it up. I'm going to pass in numbers again, but I'm going to pass in our current low. And well, if I want to split it into two arrays, well, I'm going to have to sort it into two arrays, right? So I'm going to need two function calls, right? I'll need something there. But what kind of, um, if we go back to, I got out of paint. <laughs> if we go back into paint and I had, you know, uh, five and I had three and I had two and one, where were we were splitting them? We were going to split them down the middle and we were going to sort this guy and sort this guy. So we need a middle to split them down. You know, I'm just going to leave that <laughs> close. So I need to make a quick little int mid is equal to low plus order of operation plus high divided by two, like that. Okay, so I get the middle. I'm going to split, I'm going to sort the bottom half, which is low, up to mid. And now if you think about it, I'm going to put mid plus one here. Now, why mid plus one? Well, say if I have four elements, okay, and I do my low plus high trick, I'll get two as the middle, right? But since we start counting at zero, you'll see the, on, in reality, the list on the left should be uh, zero and one, and the guys after that should be uh, two and three. Um, but if I, my low is going to be zero in this case, in reality. So, so my, if I do low plus high, zero plus maybe may my high element is three, right? And I divide that by two, I'm going to get 1.5 which due to our integer division, I'll go down to a one. But that's not true. I said I want, it's going to be zero, one, and then two and three, you know, split them up. So if my mid is one, that's not true. I want it to be at two. So I will put it in mid right here, because that's fine. We're going to go zero up to one. He's going to be our high. But over here, I need to start at two. So I'm going to put it in mid plus one, which is one plus one, two, and high. This mid plus one kind of thing works for whether it's an odd or an even amount, um, which is fantastic. Um, uh, it's kind of a little hard to grasp right now. I hope that explanation is clear where I want this to start at 2 and end at 3. And the high was our third index, and my mid is 1, so I just have to add 1 to it to get myself to start that. And then uh, once we get to a point where we've returned, so we're going to go down through recursion trees, right, over and over and over again, as long as we have low is less than high. So as long as we have more than one person in the array. When we have one person in the array, we'll just return up. So I get left... If I keep going through this array, all right, and I end up with five and three, well, if I try to do my trick before where I merge with the low, zero, and I merge with uh, the middle is my next high, right? Well, the middle of zero plus one divided by two is zero, right? That's my middle index. Well, if I try to sort that, I'll just get my, my low will be zero, sorry, <laughs> and my middle will be zero, but I'm putting that in as my high, right? I'm putting it in as a, right here, putting it in as my high. Well, I'll also get the zero index. And so that won't be, uh, low is not less than high, so we'll just return back up. And in this case, my middle is zero, so if I add one to it, I get one, and my high was index one, right? So in this case as well, low is not less than high. So once we return both of these times, we know we're at a point where we have two guys, and we might as well just merge them. So we will merge them, right? And this will go up the chain. For example, if I had five guys and I'm sorting the left side, well, it's going to sort the left side and then I'm going to split it and going to split it and going to split it and going to split it until it gets to 
parts of two. It's going to sort those guys and pop back up, you know, to maybe I've sorted, you know, uh, five, three, two, and one now to their respective places, right? And when we pop back up the chain, the other half of the list, you know, pops back maybe like a seven, eight, and a nine, right? So I initially, uh, you know, initially call this on like a six element array and I click call sort on the left, well, that sort is also going to have to split itself up and split itself up and split itself up until it gets to one element arrays. So by the time we go through the left side sorting and the right side sorting and we're ready to merge, no matter where we call it, even if I call it at the top, by the time we come back up, all the previous guys have been sorted into their respective elements, you know, in their respective little arrays. And you'll see that in the code. We'll overwrite, we'll actually overwrite parts of the array with its sorted version. All right, it'll make sense once we get there. It's kind of hard to explain merge sort in itself. I know it was thrown me for a loop when I was first learning it. The concept is pretty cool where you sort it into small and small arrays, make them quick to sort. But how the, the recursion part is really what's getting me. Now, in here, we need the low, the mid, and the high. Now, I'm going to code this just real quick. Okay, int l4, l2, and i, and we'll go l1 is equal to one, uh, l2 is equal to mid. I'll explain this in a sec. So, i is equal to one, while i is less than equal to one. Okay, so what am I doing? I now have my two lists, right? My two sections of the array. They're not separate lists. They're two sections of the array that I know are sorted. And I'm going to merge them into one. So I'm going to make a pointer, a little variable, basically, not an actual pointer, just a little integer that points to the beginning of that first section and a little integer that points to the second section. I'm going to start them. And I have I because I'm going to use um, this array B is going to hold all my stored guides, right? So I is basically going to hold where I'm at because I'm storing them in a separate array and then I'm just going to put them back into the original one, right? So I is where I'm at in that, that third array, okay? So if I'm, uh, got out of pain again, but if I'm merging those two guys together, well, I need to remember where I'm at in that new array where I'm putting them in. And so I'm going to keep track of that with I. So I have my three variables, one that keeps track of where I am in the first list or section, the guy that keeps track of where I'm in the second section that starts at mid, and this guy that starts at the low, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, while well, we haven't reached, uh, I know high is the length of my two sections together, right? So say total, I have four elements, right? My high is four. So as long as I, or basically it's going to be the index of the highest guy. Um, so say I is... Uh, or say high is like three, right? Well, I know I'm only going to go from the low index to the high index in my B array. So to make sure for that, I'm going to say keep running as long as I know B hasn't filled up that whole section. If each little section I'm mixing, merging together is two uh, uh, elements, okay? They're each two elements. I know my, the section that I'm going to work with in that B array is four long. So I'm going to go from low to high, the full length with I. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to jump out as soon as it's reached high. Because when it's reached, and filled it in. Because as soon as it's reached that, I know I have nothing else to put in. And if I do, I've done something wrong. <laughs> so first I'm going to check a couple things. There's going to be four conditions here. Well, three actual conditions. And, man, lining, the struggle of lining things up in code is real. <laughs> uh, else ifs. I'll have three conditions and then else. So first, I'm going to lay out what these are for. So first, I'm going to check. If I've, you know, um, if I've done the elements here, let me open up paint one more time. Back to the original. If I had something like this, one, two, let me plug in the mouse for this so I can do it for you guys a little bit quicker. So if I have these two guys and I'm merging them, well, you can see that, obviously, I'm going to go through this guy first. Obviously, B's going to go like that, right? Now, I have nothing left in this array to put into B, right? It's only these guys. So if, that, if that's the case, if I sense that, if I sense that my L1 pointer has gone to whatever index is after this section, well, then I can just automatically just start putting in these guys. It doesn't matter, 
Because I know that this, ar- this section, this array is sorted, right? And if I know there's nothing else I have to put in here, well, I, 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 if I just start shoving these guys in here in their same order, I know I will still end up with a sorted list. I minimize it. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to say if L1, got to plug the keyboard back in. Whoops. Dropped iPhone. So if uh, L1 is bigger than the middle, he's overstepped his bounds, so this should be mid plus one. And if you think about it, this makes sense, because uh, say I have an index of you know, 0 and 1, my middle index, remember, would be 0.5, which rounds down to 0. And I really my first list is really just 0. And my second list is really just the first index. So I want my pointer that starts at the beginning of my second list to start at that first guy, and which is middle plus 1, 0 plus 1. Um, good thing I caught that. So if L1 is greater than mid, we know we're done with that section, right? The sections are next to each other. We, I know I'm done with that section because I'm out of its bounds. If that's the case, then bi is equal to nums L2. I'm just going to go into where the pointer for the second section is pointing and just start grabbing guys in there, right? Same goes if L2 is greater than high. I will just start, in that case, I'm going to grab guys from the first list. Uh, if neither of these are the case, well, I still have to compare things, right? I'm going to have to go, um, I will have to say, if nums will go L1 is bigger than nums L2, well, I want to take the smaller guy, right? So I'm going to, if that's the case, just bi is equal to nums uh, L2. And for the final case, I could put another else if, but I don't need to, because I know if all of those others fail, then I know L1 is the, small, the smaller of the two guys, and I know neither of them are at their end, so I'll just go B I is equal to, whoops, is equal to nums L1. Okay. Now, you notice I'm, I have to increment I, and whenever I call upon L1 or L2, I have to increment them as well. I could have just put an I++ plus plus here, and every time you know I call one of these, I could put an L2++ plus plus here, and L1++, plus plus that. that's, that's reasonable, it'll work. But a, a short, quick method that you may see to save some space, I just want to expose you to it, is if I go L2++. Plus plus. Now you'll see L2++ plus plus and you'll also see plus plus L2. There's a difference between these two. Okay. You may know that I plus plus adds one to I, but what it does is it returns the value of I in any operations it's in uh, before adding to it. So example, if I said print you know, F and I did a uh, percent D and I just did uh, one plus I plus plus like that, and maybe before it I said I is equal to one. Well, you know I plus plus adds one to I, so you may think this will return three. In fact, it doesn't. It returns 1 plus whatever is in I already, which is 1. And then once that whole line of code, that whole operation is done, then adds 1 to I. So this will return 2. And then once that's all done, I will then become plus 1, which is, you know, or incremented up, which in this case would just be 2 as well. So if I just go BII like this, if I just come in to all these guys, Plus plus. Plus plus. Oh. <laughs> Shouldn't have see I get carried away with them having plus pluses. Plus plus. Plus plus. These guys will stu- still do what they did before. B sub i will be nums L of two here. Or B sub i will still be nums L of one. But when we're done, it'll also increment i, which is what we should do, and will also increment L1. Um, which is great. Um because we've used, we've used that number in L1, so we might as well move on. So now that we're done merging them into a separate array, well, we want to re-put them back into our original guy. So I will say i equals low again. We'll just reset them. I go as long as it's less than high, uh, less than or equal to high, high plus plus. I will say uh, num sub i is equal to b sub i. I am just overwriting nums with this sorted array. 
for that range. That range that we merged all the numbers to, I'm overriding that range in nums with the sorted array that is stored in D. So that's pretty much it. Um, that is, uh, I'm sure we have one or two errors that I've missed. <laughs> I'll pause on a sec to find them. Um, looking, looking, looking. It's looking solid, though. I'm, I'm hoping that we're solid here. But um, that's pretty much merge sort. We're going to keep sorting and sorting and sorting until we've gotten into those tiny... And then the recursion is hard to visualize. I suggest how I did it when I first merged sort. This, this recursion did not look like it would work for me at all. I wrote it on a piece of paper. I made a fake array, and I wrote it down on a piece of paper until I got to the end. I started off with really tiny arrays and got a little bit bigger to see that it held up, to convince myself that it holds up. And it does. Um, let's run it. Let's hope we don't have any errors. Oh, fantastic. We didn't have any. Oh, my God. Whoa, record. First Cory video without any errors. Yay. Um, we see it works. I put in this array, and it does that. And now uh, another way that is really useful for us to do it. If you want to do it, you can put printfs. Like, you know, I can put inside this if statement print uh, b1 index blah 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 is being placed with whatever nums l2 is because l2 is smaller than l1. In fact, I could even come in here and print out both of the ranges first so I see the two ranges that are being merged, right? From low to mid, I could print out that range and then say range 2 is, you know, mid plus 1 to high so I can see the two guys being merged. And I can see them being merged one at a time. So that's a thing. What, what am I doing on time, by the way? 21 minutes. Not bad. So yeah, that's merge sort in a nutshell. Really like it. As you can see, it's not terrible to write. Um, not very. The only problem with merge sort is if you're really low on memory, you have to make another array. Not great um, if you're really on memory. If you're just doing it normally, it's fine. It's a great array. The big, where it shines is that, as you can see, it doesn't, we don't have to make long, like, treks pulling things around and whatnot. We make the same number of comparisons no matter how the array is sorted. So if you want somebody that, the average running time of it, that it is consistent, that it is just on point, and no matter what you give it, merge sort is your man. He's not the best. He is not the best. That takes quick sort, hence the name, is the fastest, usually. There are many occasions, not most of the time, but there are still several occasions where even quick sort and shell sort will fall below merge sort because they just get guys on the far ends, you know, and it takes a while to move them through, or you just get extreme scenarios. Merge sort does not care. He always is on point, and that's why I like him. He's dependable. So that's uh, merge sort. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. Uh, otherwise, I will see you guys next time. See, now I have to like open my phone to turn off the mic so I can end the video in at the same time. All right, see you guys later.